and shalom everyone shalom i want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of israel i'm elder michael johnson and today we're going to be going through the book of romans i mean not the book of romans i do apologize we're going through the book of hebrews my apologies my apologies going through the book of hebrews and before we get cranked up i do want to make a quick announcement one quick announcement because right after this teaching as they crank up and start really trying to tighten up the chains on everybody as i said uh, before we made an announcement yesterday as well as i'll be doing one right now is we do have some people who is part of the king james bible university school and if you part of that and you part of what we do here and not people who we don't know and i'm and i made that clear yesterday but we still had some issues there i'm making it clear again today because of the um the the importance on and what they doing and what they pushing i'm making it more open but i'm still holding to what i hold to so what we're going to do even after this teaching here i'm gonna open it up for a minute to where people can come back if you're if you're employed or you're in school, either one or your children in school, and you part of this 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 family here, I want you to come in the back to where we can make sure we can we can take care of that with your employer or with your school, and we'll provide the information that you need to where if you choose not to be vaccinated, we we will take care of it on our end. So, and I'm not telling people who just cruise by here and then they come back there, all of a sudden they want something. I'm talking about the ones who actually is part of what we do to come back and to where we can actually take care of that. And because some people didn't know we do it, but we always did it because one of the biggest things is we have a lot of places that's refusing still to do it. However, even though most people do learn online, most times they feel they don't have a a outlet to where they can go to or they can get some support based on that. And we actually take care of that. So if you have that issue, make sure you come in the back and we'll take care of you from there. But again, but make sure that you're part of this. And if we don't know who you are, then there's no reason for you to come back there. So again, I'm making that very, very, very clear. However, we're going to go back to the book of Hebrews and... We're looking at where a lot of people, where we made that also available now, where you can still get on Lulu to get it, or you can get it also through the school, through us. And if you need the book of Hebrews that we have in also with the book of Proverbs, that we do have available. So if that's something that you're looking to do and you want to join up with us and you want to be able to take the notes based on those two books, you're more than welcome. You'll see that book that is there. I actually got the wrong one here. And you'll see this book here. You'll see it actually on Lulu itself to where you can actually go over there and get it. If not, you don't see it at Lulu. You can always get it through us here. And with it, with it being purchased through us, you literally do not pay for the... Um, you don't pay for shipping over on our side. So you won't pay for shipping. You won't pay for taxes on IN. If you're getting it through Precept Mastery. And that is also down in the description where you can say it's where it says purchase the workbook. You can also get it through there. And both of the books is combined. So it's one price when you click on it. It's one price for both books. So if you get it, you're going to get both books at that one price. So because we had some people where it was kind of some confusion there. We got that straightened out on yesterday. So we want to make sure that if you want to choose to go that direction, please do. And we can make sure that's taken care of. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pick it up where we left off at from before in Hebrews. Because what we did last week, well really the week before, we was on Hebrews chapter 1, but we was in verse 10. And when we look at that, I want you to make sure the way we're going to take the notes, but I'm going to go slow enough to where we can really get what was happening to where we can understand what Paul was trying to convey to us to where we can see the relationship on what we need to be doing. 
because as we continually move forward, I'm trying to push more of you guys to see more things, even more spiritual than what you see carnally. That's that's the key to pushing and to teach is to get you to see it the exact way what the Most High is trying to get you to see is to make you see it the way that he's telling you, not something that you're going to see that's literal or carnal. He's telling you everything that is actually spiritual. So let's look at this and we're going to start putting this in there, but then I want you to make sure that you take your notes to where you can put them in. And we're going to pick this up at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 10. We're going to look at this. And, and we're going to start going through it. It says, and, and the main thing in most people, if you ever not sure what the England language is, is something that is really a big pet peeve of mine that I'd actually like to show you how even the simplest functioning of those words work. So that's why you hear me say, including many times you will see and, because that's what it's doing. It's including something else. It's a connection. So it says, including thou creator in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. <clears throat> and you got the semicolon there, which that is the end of that thought. <clears throat> and it goes on to another thought, including, so now it's going to add something else. The heavens are the works of thy hand. And we're going to unpack that. We want to unpack it. And basically what it's telling you about the creator laid the foundation. So when you see what he's talking about, he laid the foundation. He want us to clearly get that those earth was established right there. He established the earth right there, including the heavens. He's telling you this right here as a whole. And that's what we're going to unpack to where we're going to understand what he's saying physically to where we can understand what he really wants us to see spiritually. Because this is Paul speaking and we don't know what Paul is actually saying because most people are going to look at this literal. And Paul is telling you something in his fullness to what we need to really get. And that's where we come to and we're going to be running the precepts of this to where we can run the understanding of this. And when you look at, we're going to look at uh, Psalms in chapter 8, over here in verse 3. And this is what it's talking about. So when we see this, it says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. So literally, we telling him what he did. We telling him what he did. So we professing this to the creator. That's what's happening here. So it says, including the heavens are the works of thy hand. So it's like you telling him something that he did. So it tells you the same thing over here with something we should have been doing. And when you look at Psalm, it says, when I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, which is telling you what you with his hands, the moon and the stars, which thou ordain. It's telling you the same thing right over here. The identical name where Paul is getting this stuff from. And have we ever taken the time? Have we ever taken the time to consider, just to consider, to think about carefully, even about the heavens or what you think about the moon or the stars and how they are, are obedient. And I'm talking about the strict obedient to the, to the heavens, the moon, the stars, to the word of God. Every day, cloudy or not, that moon is always going to be up there. Cloudy or not, cloudy or not, those stars are always there. Cloudy or not, the sun is always there. And, and the way you can even make sure of that, the way if you even want to see it, if you ever in a plane and you're traveling, you can be traveling at night or in the daytime. You can be traveling in the daytime, it can be raining and pouring where you are. But as soon as that plane go above those clouds, it's sunny just like anything else. Just like anything else. Have we considered that? And it's been obedient since the beginning of time. That's why he said, have we considered the heavens? Have we, have we even thought about that? We were quick to think about if you bought, bought a TV or a computer 
But how long do they stay operational? See, most times we can get a computer or get TVs, and they'll stay operational for two, three, four years, and then they'll start going on the blink. The sun, the stars, and the moon been faithfully coming up and going down since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of time. Have we considered those? That's what that's what we need to really get the understanding of. And when he goes down in verse 4, he says this. <clears throat> it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Are we even mindful of him? It says, The son of man that thou visited him. Are we even mindful of the things that God done? Are we even mindful of him? As long as these things are God that he had created and everything that he created is still temporary when you look at it as he's going to get down into this. Because he's going to tell you about these things are still temporary. But are we mindful and do we take the time to even think on how he laid this foundation and that is God? And then if we was mindful of these things, we was mindful of these things. Then we can take the time and we can understand because if we're not mindful of them, and this is why he's saying this all the time, because when we're not mindful of these, everything becomes a parable. So we have to be mindful of them because we're not mindful of them. Everything is a parable. So now we don't understand the parable. So when people tell you things and they tell them, well, we're going to tell you a parable. And they literally, as soon as you say a parable, they automatically, oh, I know what this is. No, that's not the truth. They're going off something what somebody else said. Let's look at something. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Genesis 1, chap chapter 1, verse 3. It says, and God said... It says, let there be light, and there was light. So the key becomes is this. Is that a parable? That's the key. Because were you mindful of this on how the foundation of the earth was laid? Because this, if you say, no, this is not a parable. It was 100% a parable. That right there. What you're looking at, that is a parable. When it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. That is a parable. And we don't even know it. Why? We, was, we didn't take the time to consider anything. Let's look at verse 6. Let's, let's go over here verse 6. Let's look at something. It says, that, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Is that a parable? No, that's that's straightforward. No, that's a parable. It's not literal. We don't take the time to consider anything that God created. So since we don't take the time, how in the world do we know what he's talking about? God is 100% bona fide, unadulterated spirit. So he only can relate to us by showing us physical things and so we can get the understanding. And if we can consider them, now we can find out what he's talking about and flip them over to spiritual and, and get the full meaning on what he really wanted to do. Because that's right there on understand it. Because we're going to take it literal. Let's look at this. We can go down to some more. Look at verse 9. It said, God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Is that is that literal or a parable? It's a parable. It's not literal. But they will teach it literal. And it's not. And it's not. Let's go a little bit deeper there. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, and whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Is that... Spiritual or literal? And they're going to tell you that's, that's literal. So you're going to tell me that God put so much emphasis and so much importance to make sure that grass was there. Because that's the first thing going to come out of my mouth. He 
create when he started creating when he get right to verse 11 he brought forth grass and you're going to say that was so important and you can go the world over and grass is not all over the land but it was so important that he had grass there it don't make any sense why? Because it's a parable. The same thing is he talking about herb yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind. Where do that importance come in so much and people sit there saying that's literal and he's telling you something spiritual? It's craziness. The reason why we think everything literal because when I considered the heavens of thy work, but have we done that? Have we done that? All this work is up in hand. And the only way he can show it to us is give us similitudes of it, but we'll take everything literal. Let's look a little bit more. Let's jump down to verse 14. And see a little bit more. And it says, And God said, again, Let the lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. For days and years. Is that spiritual or is it literal? And many people are going to tell you, no, that's literal. That's, that, no, that's literal. No, it's not. It's spiritual. He's a spirit. So he's showing you physical things to which you can you can comprehend, but then you have to flip it spiritually. He says this even down when you get down to verse 20. Watch, watch what he says here. He says, And God said, Let the water bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life. In the fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens. Wow. Spiritual, literal. Have we considered thy heavens or thy fingers? Have we considered any of his works? Have we thought about any of his works? We think we can figure out God in a blink. We'll go run to some commentary and figure God out in a blink. Hmm. Verse 24 says this. <clears throat> Verse 24 says it. It says, And God said, Again, let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. So if it's literal, so far, man haven't came anywhere. If that's true. If that's true. These are parables that we just don't understand. Because many people read them literal in their spiritual. And the reason why that is done is for a special reason. It's for a special reason. And this is why so many things is hidden from the world. So many things is hidden from us. It says this over in Matthew chapter 13, picking it up at verse 35. It says this. In Christ is speaking, it says, And that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. In parables. All these are parables. He said, I will open my mouth in parables and utter things which have been kept sacred, secret, from the foundation of the world. Because he laid the foundation of the earth. And it was kept secret because we look at so many things and we take them literal. Not spiritual. <clears throat> Not spiritual whatsoever. Parables is fulfilling which was spoken in the beginning which we should be paying close attention to. And it holds the secret to the mystery of the kingdom of God. That's what they're, that's the purpose of them. 
That's the purpose of them. One of the best examples, I'm going to show you, one of the best examples is this. We're going to look at Judges. One of the best examples is this. We're going to go to Judges chapter 14. And, and if I'm going too fast, please put in there, slow down. You ain't going to have to sugarcoat it, just slow down. And I will slow down. Because I do know we have some older folks that they say they have some problems sometimes writing down some of the precepts that I'm doing. If I need to slow down, I have no problem slowing down. But what we need to do is look at this. In Judges chapter 14, verse 14. 14, 14. And we want to understand what's, what's, saying, what's being said here. He said this, and he said, and he said to them, and this is Samson talking to these Philistines, but he's going to give them a riddle. He's going to give them a riddle, and he said, and he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, including out of the strong came forth sweetness, including they could not in three days expand the riddle. They couldn't even they couldn't even tell him what the riddle was about. That Samson just put together this small riddle. His own little parable they couldn't figure out. So what was the meaning of this? And most people know that was the meaning of it. Most people know that was the meaning of it. The eater came forth meat, out of the strong came forth sweetness. So the conclusion to this, the conclusion to this is what the sweeter, what is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion. That's, that's what's the thing there. But from the foundation is constructed for them not to understand it. The foundation of this was structured for them not to understand it. When we're meditating on the works of the Father of the Creator of all things, we have to always understand the power from which He came. So we need to meditate on things that He created and understand them. we don't do this, then we wasting our time. Many people will sit there, you hear people, oh, I read the Bible once a year. I read the Bible from front to back. But did you understand what you read when you was reading it? Did you understand it? We have to meditate on these things that we have to meditate on the works that he has done. And if we don't do that, we're not going to never get the full understanding on what he's talking about. We'll never get the full understanding of this. In Psalms, it says this. In Psalms 143, it says this. In verse 5, Psalms 143, in verse 5, it says, I remember the days of old. In the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. Remember those. Because he speaks about it. He speaks about it in Genesis. And he says, I meditate on thy works. Again, we're going right back to what we need to be doing on something that we try to make sure each and every one of us do. Meditate on the works of God. But it says more here. It says, I muse on the work of thy hand. So muse is just talking about the wonder and marvel. So he says, I marvel on the works. So that's all this is saying right there when we're looking at this muse. It has a couple of different meanings, but you can wonder or you can marvel. So it's telling you right here, I marvel on the works, on the work of thy hand. Meditate on it. When you meditate on it, and you look at things, it makes, really, it's weird. Like, man, how did he do that? 
the reason why you can even do that, you can take a seed and look at a tree that can be grow 80, 90 foot tall. And it was in a seed that was less than an inch high. How is everything that that tree will evolve to is contained in that seed? It has an answer to it, but we need to understand it. And if we understand it, we can know what he's talking about spiritually and why that seed is that way. The same reason why we go right back to Psalms 8 and 3 and, and see the same thing. Psalms 8 and 3, it says, going right back to it. And he tells you, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. And then we can truly, truly meditate on his work. When we can meditate on his work, I'm telling you, it's going to be a marvel because you're going to sit there, wow, how did he do this? When we consider just the heavens, just the heavens, not how he made them with this power of his voice, but no one knows where they end. If you ever notice, you see where even our newscasters, they'll sit there and they'll talk about outer space, this, outer space, that, but they can never tell you where the end of them, where, where, where the heavens are. They can't tell you what's all up there. What other places they have to where they can go. And I'm not talking about, oh, it's other lights there. What I'm talking about, they don't know what's there at all. At all. God created these things. He created the moon, a lesser light, and the sun, a greater light. He did the stars also from the foundation. He gave them instructions for us to see signs and seasons. He told us that. Right here. And thou, Lord, in the beginning thou hast laid foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. And we don't take the time to meditate on what he done. And just as I said, everything perish. See, even all this, what you see, is he wants you to understand how long from the beginning of the time the sun and the moon has his ordinance. From the beginning of the time. But they do come to an end. Because we can see them. And that's why I say he, all this is going to come to an end. Where well, he tells you right here in verse 11. And this is where the seriousness is. He says, they should perish. The sun, the moon, the stars, all that's going to perish. The earth is going to perish. But thou remainest, and we need to know what that is talking about. Thou remainest. But it's telling you one thing, so old as doeth a garment. So the same thing we see for these other places. Everything else you see is going to wax old. The sun, the moon, the stars going to perish. It's going to perish. The Bible tells us this. The Bible tells us this. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians tells us this. In Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, because now we see it, we can see the, the moon, the sun, the stars, but at the things which are not seen. That's what, see, that's why you want to sit there. If he didn't did these things you can see, just imagine 
or what you can imagine with things that are unseen that we cannot see that he created because he created seen and unseen things and it says which are unseen it says for things which are seen are temporal he's telling you right here things which are seen are temporal then they temporary same as I'm saying the sun the moon the stars they, those are temporary do we meditate on those are temporal so those two come to an end gonna wax old like a garment but he says this and this is where the focus should be he says but the things which are not seen are internal so you got things that not seen those are eternal hmm it's gonna be a time where all water gonna dry up spiritually we know what they're saying spiritually they're saying at one time we're gonna dry up it's not gonna be no knowledge upon the earth to where you can drink from think about that it's gonna be the time where these things are gonna happen The wind, we don't know which gum come from or where, where do it go. Is that temporal or is that eternal? That's something for you to think about while we going through the study. Something for you to think about. Is wind eternal or is it temporal? Wind. That's something for you to really think about. If we see the power of God, these things that you see, since they was from the beginning of time, no matter what you see, and if you can see it, it's temporal. So if it's temporal and you see it, why are you going to hope for something that you already see? But what do remain is the word of God. God's word always going to remain and the focus should always be on God. Not on anything else. Everything else going to wax up. The same as they do a garment. But his word going to always remain. So if that's going to remain and then we following things that are seen man, woman, whatever. And we're following things that are seen. And we know those are temporal. These are things that is technically dead in the eyes of God. So, it's the same as if you following a man. And he's telling you, I can get you to heaven or you follow me and I can get you into heaven. A man. And we all know that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So if flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, how do flesh and blood know where the kingdom of God is? Flesh and blood know where the kingdom of God is. Because it can't enter in. So why are you gonna even why should he even tell you? That's the point. It's the point. Let's look at something. I want to show you something. These things is, is more so with Hebrews is telling you something which we really need to focus on and think about. Make sure we're making the notes and doing what we need to be doing. We need to do our due diligence for what well, we seek in the kingdom. We need to make sure we're doing our due diligence. In Proverbs chapter 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. And we're going to jump around for a minute because it's telling you something really important here. It says, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. That's what we need to think about. If you wander out of the way of understanding, meaning which goes not the way of God, so when you see something or even give an understanding on what God's saying and you decide to go another way, then you mean that you're going to wander out of the way of understanding. And it says, shall remain in the congregation. 
So now, since you're going to wander out of that way of what the truth is being told to you to where you can see it, you can finally see it. And now when you see it, you can prepare for it. And when you can prepare for it, you know you need to prepare for something to come, not for something that you already see, because you know everything that's seen is temporal. So you're trying to prepare for something that's to come. Same as getting insurance. Good, but if you're going to do it the other way, if you're going to wander out that way, and what man will do, you're going to remain with the congregation of the dead. It's telling you this right here. Verse 16, man that wandered out of the way of the understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. It's clear. It's clear as day. Many of us are going to do this regardless. Many of us are going to do this regardless. We're going to wander in our own way. And we're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. In fact, let's see something here. In Luke chapter 20, in Luke 20 and verse 38, the Bible tells us this. For he is not the God of the dead. So when you wander away from God, don't think that he's still your God. Because he's not the God of the dead. And you're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. Meaning, if you want to go your own way, you go your own way. He's not the God of that. But he's the God of the living. If you plan planning ahead and you want to be obedient and follow his word, then you're doing something else. But many people are going to wander out the way. They got another way they can go. People are going to seek life through flesh. And they shall die. This is this is done on a daily basis. People are going to, going to remain in places because they believe everything with somebody is coming out their mouth and they can sit there and they can close up the Bible and not showing you the living word, but they giving you their words, which is words of the dead. In fact, let's 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 look at something all together. Let's try to put this together and, and get a better understanding. You look at Romans and we're gonna to go to chapter eight. Verse twenty-four. And the scripture, scripture says this. And it's for the question. It says, for we are saved by hope. Something that can you can't see. You can't see. It's eternal. So if it's something eternal, you can't physically see it. Because he said you got, because he said you got things temporal, you got things eternal. Things you see is temporal. Things you cannot see are the things that's eternal. He's telling you this way, Brother Phil. We just went through the scriptures and we just seen this. So if we know that is all true, so it's telling you right here. It says, "But we are saved by hope. But hope that is is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do we hope for?" So if a man teaching us something, he's telling you to be just like me, be like me, be like me, and I can get you there. What he's telling you is to get in the same financial position or the level or the category on where he is. Getting to God, you just are the congregation of the, of the dead. Because you don't wander off from understanding. You taking on a doctrine that this man then put on. We should be looking for eternal things. Those are things you cannot see. And as we get old, we see ourselves on a daily basis. And same thing is you can even go look in the mirror. You can look every day. You can look in the mirror every day. You can see yourself, many of us, from a child to the age we are today. We can see that we aged. 
from a child to where we are today. The same as you see, you have some shoes as a you wear them every day to get old, to get worn. Clothes, cars, houses. Why hope to live only for as long as a tree been on earth? The average of some trees is 400 to 600 years. You get some go 100, some go 20. But if you can see the tree, where people tell you, this been in this tree been on my family property for 200 years, the same tree. But if you can see it, that tree has a death date. The same as the moon and the sun. He said, if you can see it, it's temporal. And we can clearly walk outside, we can see the moon, we can go outside and we can see the sun. So we know there was a temporal. This, what you're building to understand is your faith and your hope. This is what you got to build. Those are eternal things. These are not temporal things. So if we individually getting old, we compare it to the old clothing, then sometimes we need to come to the understanding where we are preparing something for an eternal place. And that eternal place is clearly up to us. Let's look at where Paul got this from. Let's look at where Paul got this from here oh, real quick. We're going to see where Paul pulled this from. And we're going to go to Psalms chapter 102. Just to understand the entire part of it. 102 and verse 25. And it says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth. This is where Paul pulled this from. Pulled verse 10. That's where he got this from. It says, in the heavens of the work of thy hand. Now you see all this is, you tell him, you see in verse 10, it says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning, they laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. You see where you got this from now. Paul speaks law, hence Paul speaks Old Testament always. He speaks law, but he speaks... Old Testament always. So when we see that this happened here, when he established this, he established this work with his power. But he tells you something in verse 26. The same thing as we see here, you're going to see the same thing when you get to verse 26. Same thing in verse 11 in Hebrews. We're going to see the same things over here in Psalms 102 verse 26. It says, Thy shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. See what he's doing over here? As a vesture, thou shalt, thou shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. So you see where this Paul got it from. Now we see where a lot of stuff with Paul is getting, but you see why some of Paul, what he says, sometimes it can be really complex. But he says some key things here. When we look at it in the Old Testament, it gives us some better keys there. The reason why it gives us better keys is because it says, Thou shalt be changed. Thou sh uh, shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. And you see over there in verse 12, it's saying the same thing. It says, And as the vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and the years shall not fail. How do you unpack all that together? How do we look at this and to where we can really wrap our head around it? You'll see the same thing with they, what they reference in and what we see here. In Revelation chapter 21, picking it up at verse 1, and same thing with John seeing. 
<clears throat> it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. It says this. It said this exact thing. The vessels should change them, and they shall be changed. Like a garment. Like a garment. In verse, in fact, verse 2, watch this. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Hmm. All these things is going to be changed. But now we're going to be changed over to a spiritual side to where it's going to never pass away. It's eternal. To better, to better understand what we study in there, to better understand what we study in there is this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Pick it up at verse 42. So where we can better understand where it's coming from. It says, so also in the resurrection of the dead is what we've been talking about. See, because either you're going to wander with the congregation, but either you're going to take off what you have. We're going to get more into that. And it's saying here, it says, and so from also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It's clear right here. So the same thing we see with the seed. So a seed is sown into our bodies, which is dust of the ground. Actually, if we want to take it better yet, let's put these two side by side to where you can see where, we, where I'm coming from. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2. In verse 7. Actually, it's already highlighted. It said, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. So what I want you to do is see this here. Form man from the dust of the ground. So that's what we know. We know this. So now when we look over here, and he sown seeds in corruption, which is bodies in corruption, which is bodies that were set for destruction. I want you to stay with me on this. Because we're going to see some things that's really, really important. And it's telling you the same thing where he's going to double down on this. He says this. He says, it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and rise, and, rise, and it is raised in power. Talk about the seed. The seed that's, that's in us. This is interesting. This is so interesting. So when he plants the seed, when you see when we was back in Genesis, it was telling you it was seeds within itself. I know you remember that. So if it's within itself, that's what he's still talking about here. It says this even here. It says it is sown in a natural body. Bingo. That seed was sown in a natural body. That should ring bells all day long. All day long. So since this was raised in a power and raised in glory, sown in dishonor, but it's sown in a natural body. Man was formed from the dust of the ground, which is natural. Which is going to wax old like a garment. I'm telling you that over there in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11. However, it's raised, it is raised in a spiritual body. You see that? Let me see if I can bring that a little bit closer. Can't quite do it. Yep, there we go. So it raised in a spiritual body. And it's telling you again here. 
There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. There's one seed that carries everything what we've seen from the beginning. It told you that when we looked at Genesis. Let me go back to Genesis just to keep this in mind and then we're going to go somewhere else on this same one. So Genesis chapter 1 and we see where he's saying exactly what he's talking about. And you see this here. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind and whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So it was sown in a natural body. It was sown in a natural body. But it would be raised and then you have a spiritual body. Meaning, meaning this, meaning this. Let's go back to 40. Get a little bit of understanding there. It says there are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. There are celestial bodies, spiritual, and you have terrestrial bodies, which is natural. And it says, but glory of the celestial is one and glory of the terrestrial is another. So the glory of both are different doesn't matter. The glory of the natural body cannot see glory of the internal body. Because you can't see it. It's eternal. So many people and many of us, we have that issue. Because our bodies is going to wax old like a garment. See, we can't get rid of that because we have natural bodies. Compared like a garment of clothing. But then you also have, which in that seed is celestial. Spiritual, eternal. And glory for one is different than the glory than the other. So if you're seeking celestial bodies, then it comes with rules that we need to follow. If you want the celestial body, the physical body, all you got to do is just keep living the way you're living. You don't have to change anything. But if you want the celestial body, it comes with rules. And this is what he's getting into. It comes with rules. Because it's telling you right up front, it says, in herb yielding seeds and fruit trees yielding seed after his kind is doing certain things. Because it's glory of celestial and it's glory of terrestrial. So it comes with rules. Both of them comes with rules. Are we going to follow the rules? That's the key. Let's look at some of the rules here and, and let's see what these rules are. We're going to go to Philippians in chapter 3 and get a better understanding. Chapter 3 and verse 18. Paul pinned this into where we can understand a little bit more and get a better understanding. It says, For many walk of whom I have told you often, including now, tell you even weeping, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. That's the mouthful. We're going to unpack it, but it's still a mouthful. See, many of us, and in, 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 in seeing most people don't take this defense to it because it cuts, it dices, it slices. What the word? But many of us, they want to boo-hoo over anything. Many of us. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I, I just love him. No, please, get off of that. Get off of that. I call that another kind of cry. See, because many of us want to walk to the rules of Christ, but then even we want to be weeping as we doing them. That's what that's talking about. And then they are enemies of the cross of Christ. 
Oh, are you following me? That's what he's saying. You have so many of us will sit there and boohoo like you is doing, putting in all this 100% work for Christ and boohooing all the way to. Telling you. But many of you all whom I told you often told you even to tell you even weeping that they that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. But you want us to see what you're doing, which all that stuff is going to wax old. And you're going to be enemy of the cross. So we need we need to see what he's getting into. We need to see a better understanding and see how that functions. In Mark chapter 16, and we'll look at verse 24. Yahushua says this himself. It says, Then said Yahushua unto his disciples. What did he say? What 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 did what he say? He says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his suffering unto death. Take up his cross. His own suffering unto death and follow me. But many of us are enemies to the cross. Many of us going to sit there and say, he died, he came up on the cross, and he died for everything I did. So I can continually sin. So, and then you tell me to get on there, I'm going to weep. Oh, Lord, please, Lord, 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 please, Lord, Lord, please. But he's telling you, you're going to suffer. Because that's all cross means, suffering unto death. We're going to be following in his footsteps. We have to take up our cross, what it says right there. We have to take up his cross, and we got to follow him. Right here, Claire. But no matter what, we're going to make that cross an enemy. Verse 19. Because he's been very upfront here with us. It's in whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Hmm. Knowing that flesh is set for destruction, and it is the end. But if you letting God be your belly and the glory to the end of the shameful things that's of this world, having a earthly mind or you're not willing to come after Christ. That's what a lot of us going to do. See, because our glory should be to the shame of the world. Think about that. This is what we need to think about. For many of us going to sit there and they want to do pity parties. And suffering is part of the world. Are you going to be an enemy of the cross? Let's look at something. Let's look at something because that was a full stop there, but let's pick up a little bit more. It says, it says, for our conversation is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the creator of salvation, the anointed one. It's clear as day. Our conversation must be about the business of heaven. Not as the one that's going away like a garment. Well, we got to build this. We got to do that. We're getting ready to do this. We need to raise money for that. Our conversation need to be in heaven. 
what we need to be doing to get there. Not trying to sit there to put something here. I need this. I need that. You're not paying this. You're not paying that. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. So we need to be about our creator of Sebastian and the anointed one, which is Jehovah, Christ. I'm telling you right there, right up front. Because if not, then we just enemies to the cross. When they sitting there telling you, anyone telling you, well, we need to be buying this for this, what they want to call a church, or doing this or doing that for this, what you want to call a church, what do that have to do with the business going on with God? Oh, we, we can get more people in here. No, you you think you get more people, you can get more money. Let's look at something in verse 21. Let me see if I can put all this together. Let me see if I can put that together. Yeah, I can. Verse 21, it says this. It says, Who changed our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the workings whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Who changed our vile, contemptible bodies. I'm telling you right there. Fashion for the celestial body. Eternal body. Because our body is going to wax old. Our bodies is going to wax old. The same thing, you think you're not getting old. You know, same thing, I got some grandkids. And one is seven, one is six. And they can run like it's no tomorrow. And it just seems like they don't run out of no wind. None. And they will run all day. I remember I used to can do that. But I tell them now, Papa, Papa got to rest. Y'all, y'all running. They, and they run, run, and run some more. Because that body, the mind is willing. But that flesh, the weakened. But we gotta remember what we're dealing with. We gotta remember what we're dealing with. In Psalms, in Psalms it says this. It says, and back we're going back to Psalms 102. We're gonna pick it up at verse 27. It says, but thou art the same Thy years should have no end. But it's telling you the same thing. And it's saying with those years, if you have that spiritual body, you the same. You you gonna go over with the same mind, the same understanding. That's a beautiful thing. But the only difference is thy years should have no end. Wow. That is what we should be seeking. Changing that garment. And when he says that, we look at it this way. We look at it this way. This is this is what we have forward to look to if that's something we're truly seeking. And In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 52, this is the beautiful part. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be risen shall be rise incorruptible and we shall be changed showing you something physical but we can relate to it spiritually saying something physical in in a moment time is in a moment in the twinkling of an eye that understanding if we understood it we should have got that and it all boils down to the parable for understanding that's what it boils down to. The parable for understanding. He's saying this in, to where we can get it all together. I'm, I'm going to do this where we can get this all in one part. And why he's saying it even in that way. In Romans chapter 12, picking it up at verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this world. Why? Because if we conform to this world, now we're thinking of things of the world and we see things of the world and things that are seen as temporal, things that are not seen as, as eternal. But if we conform to the things of this world, we think in temporal things with all that comes to an end. You with me? This is what this getting into. Everything's going to wax old. So we can't be conformed to this world. We have to renew our mind tells you this right it actually tells you but it says but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind that ye may prove that is what, what what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God we have to renew our minds we have to get off these temporal things but men are going to tell you about temporal things that's why Many men are going to always push money as their forefront. They're going as the temporal things, things of death. Don't be conformed to temporal things like the garment. It's telling you that. These things will pass away and living for now and for this minute, you conform to the glory of this world. So one must be transformed by renewing your mind your way of thinking, seeking the things which are unseen rather than the things that are seen. Prove what is good and perfect. And that is the will of God. That is clearly telling you the will of God. In verse 12, he gets in a little bit more to where we could pull in a little bit more details. Because he's building on, on a bigger picture on what he wants us to really see. It says, in comparing a vesture, shall thou fold them up as a vesture? We should just fold them up. You see this over here? It says, But thou art the same, and thy years are no end. Same thing. You cannot. Temporal things, you can fold them up. Eternal things, you can't. That's the catchphrase in this. He says, as a vesture, thou shalt see. So as a garment is all the saying. As a garment, fold them up. They shall be changed. But thou art the same, in the years shall not fail. The same thing he's telling you over there in, 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 in Psalms 102, 27. Same, same, telling you the same thing. This is where you're getting this stuff from. But he's trying to give you clarity on what Psalms 102 is saying. As is, that's what he says. But they aren't the same. So if you are the same and your mind is being changed, but now you're taking off the temporal things, those garments, fold them up. That's why he says that. But you see over there where he says, but thou art the same and the years have no end. See, he's saying the identical thing because the vesture shall, shall fold them up. So these temporal things you're going to fold up and you put away. 
and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. You are the same, and thy years shall not fail. You don't have no end. It's telling you right up front. Right up front. And what's going to happen? He says this in making sure this is clear here. Let me put this a little bit more. Put a little bit more. And he says this. It says, But thou which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Remember what we said was what's the rule of life? They have rules. These have rules. So the catch is what? The message is the seed. And the word must rule the body if you seek an eternal life. Christ must rule the flesh. If not, we got a problem. He's telling you this all the time. He's telling you this all the time. We're going to go back, y'all. Uh, actually, we've got to go to 1525. I think I was already here. And he's telling you the same thing. He's actually just repeating it another way. He says, For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. All flesh. He has to reign. We have to mortify our bodies. Because the problem with us not mortifying our bodies, now we have a problem because one thing about it is this, and never forget this, and we're going to let the Bible say it and we just can comment on it. Galatians chapter 5. This went to 4, but let's go to 5. In verse 17. And he tells you. He says for the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. These and these are contrary. The one to the other. They're contrary against each other. So he has to reign. He must reign to put the enemy. Which is the flesh under his feet. So it makes all the sense in the world. Because flesh is conforming to the things of the world. The spirit don't. The flesh is going to agree to everything in the world. The spirit is not. Let's look at something. We'll look at Amos in chapter 3. Picking it up at verse 3. Scripture says this. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Flesh and spirit can walk together. Flesh and spirit cannot walk together. You, you, you see this. Flesh and spirit cannot walk together. But he says more here. Because he's going to even give you some silhouette pictures. It says this. It says, uh, Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Think about that. The devil is the same thing. The devil is the same thing. See, because First Peter tells you. Actually, let's go there. Let's go there. First Peter tells you this. First Peter chapter five, picking up at verse eight. Tells you the same thing. Be be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, 
because you can't walk together and be agreed. That's not going to happen. It says your adversary, the devil, who who controls the flesh, as a roaring as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, because he cannot walk with you and agree with nothing. It's not going to happen. In fact, verse five tells you more. It says, "Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth?" Where no gin is for him, you tell me. You tell me. That's impossible. That 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 what he what he's saying right there. That's impossible. That's why he's even saying that. It's saying, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? He's flying. So how he's gonna? You should get the picture. You should get the picture. Where there is no gin for him, shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? See, the bird is is just telling you the understanding. Can they can they fall? So can your understanding fall into a snare and there is no gin? There ain't no gin there. That's technically what he's telling you. It's not even a snare there. So you either letting your understanding just because it's the lust. The only thing going to draw you is lust. That's it. No reason for it to make a snare for a bird because the bird is to understand it. So there's no reason to make a snare. Because all you got to do is beat you on your understanding and you're, and you're, you're got. That's the key to, to this verse right there. That's the key to that. In fact, it says this. It says this. In verse 6. It says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city, including the people, not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Spirit of God have not done it? You see his comparison. We have warning been given in the cities time and time and time and time and time again. But do you see any fear? No, you don't see no fear in the streets. He's telling you he's coming back, but you don't see fear in the streets. Why? Because flesh rules. Flesh rules. So he can blow the trumpet. Blowing it now. Anybody afraid? No. Mm -mm. Anybody going to change? Yeah, maybe you might get one. Might get one. This is what happens. The reason why he have to sit there to why he said flesh has to be up under his feet. It's dirt. Let's look at this in verse 7. It says, Surely, it says, Surely, the Creator God, and you see this is all caps, G O D, that's talking about the main one. That's why it's telling you the Creator God. He's the main enchilada. It says, We'll do nothing. That's a mic drop. He's he not going to do that. But he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Problems. These are problems. Because they're going to reveal and they keep giving warning that he's on his way. When he get here, he's going to have a problem. Let's not be part of the problem. Let's be part of what the solution is. Meaning what? Doing what he said to do. We're not going to be part of the problem. This is why he's saying this. I'll show you why he's saying this. Real, real simple reason.
We go Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Picking it up at verse 7. And it tells you, it says, then, the, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. He created from the dust, and dust we shall return. But the key is, is what he put that seed in that body of dirt, and what that dirt did is if it watered and it was getting the proper knowledge and everything was coming up, then when the spirit returns, it's going to return to God who gave it, but he's going to take your spirit with it. It's key. Because it said, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. But if that spirit didn't do what's right, that spirit will be cast into the lake of fire. So we did things that was wrong all the time. We did things that was wrong continually. So this is why he says certain things this way. He says certain things this way. And I just want to show to you before we close this up. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Something just to remember and to help us. It says, In the sweat of thy face shall thy eat bread. From the sweat of thy face shall we eat bread. It says, Till I return to the ground. Because he tells you, as it says, all dust going to return to the earth as it was. And out, for out it was taken, for out thou was taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shall return. When it's taken from dust, we return into dust. But since we sit here and we want to make sure that you want to have the longevity of eternal life, you give an opportunity. Take it. Take it. Hebrews chapter 4 on what we see. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I mean chapter 1. Verse 4. And this is part of our thing. It says, being, being made so much better than the messengers, comparing he have by inheritance obtained more excellent way than they. That is interesting. That is interesting. Because when you get down here to verse 14, he clears up. It says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who should be heirs of salvation? That's a question mark. So these ministering spirits is your key. That's your key. These ministering spirits is your key. Because it's telling you, saying the heirs of salvation. So the key is this, and what it's telling you. Because he's saying he's going to make your enemy the footstool. He's going to make his enemy that footstool. So we understand how he's doing this. And it's a real plain way that he do it in front, but most people are going to always take it up as a parable. In Jeremiah chapter 3, picking up at verse 15, he tells you this. Because he said he, he, you're going to tell him this stuff. He says, I will give you pastors. Not shepherds. I'm going to give you pastors. Not, not, not shepherds. I'm going to give you people who are going to feed somebody. I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's what I'm going to do to make thy enemies thy footstool. I'm going to make thy enemies thy footstool by doing this. And you're going to see, you're going to see how he's going to do this. Beautiful way on how he does this. In Psalms 91, going back to 91, we pick it up at verse 11. And here's your key. It says, And he shall give 
his angels charge over thee. So he's going to give messengers over thee. But people sit there, oh, so that makes a shepherd. No, it don't. Because that ain't what he said. He's going to give them charge over thee. He's going to give him charge over thee. Not ruling them. No. I'm going to give you charge over That's That's where your job is. I'm going to give you charge over them. To keep thee in the way. In the ways. That's it. That's what he's saying. So they have charge of information for understanding the covenant on what's there. Meaning, meaning this. We'll be playing with this one here over here. Because many of them, no matter what, they're going to push themselves up. But he's telling you what he's doing. In Ezekiel chapter 3, picking up at verse 17. He's telling you. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. For that reason, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. I'm going to give you charge over them to feed them with knowledge and understanding on what I'm talking about until I make all flesh my footstool. That's all he's saying. I'm going to take out all flesh. All flesh I'm taking out. He said this in a way to where we can get this. He said this in a way where we can get this. In the same way we have charge over them, and he's telling us right here to give him warning. And he and he and he made some things perfectly clear to us. We're gonna see it. In Deuteronomy chapter 18. Because these enemies have to be made a footstool. And we're gonna go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, we're gonna pick it up at verse 19. And he says this. And he says, See, I'm going to give you charge over them. You're going to have charge over them. But he's going to say something that's clear. He says, and it should come to pass that whosoever would not hearken unto my words, not their words, to his words, not that person who's feeding you words, you're going to listen to his words. He says, that whosoever should not hearken unto my, to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. He's clear. Because I'm, I'm going to make these enemies my footstool. I'm going to make all flesh my footstool. All flesh. He's clear. But he says a little bit more here. See, because he ain't talking about, you can see right now, he ain't talking about Oh, well, we know this talking about Jesus, as most people say. Well, we know that's talking about Jesus. But you get ready, you get ready, he can ready to clear this up right here in verse 20. He's gonna make this real clear for us. It says, but the prophet, you see, but the prophet, whatever one it is that's teaching him that's teaching you to keep my way. But the prophet, that's why he's saying that, which shall presume to speak. A word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak. You see what he's saying there. So now we see the difference he's doing here. Watch what he says. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Other gods. Meaning the same one where you're going to bring offerings to this man. Pastor's appreciation. He's another god. Because you're going to bring him gifts. You're going to bring him offerings. Love tokens. He's a God. You can say he's not, but he's, he's a God. Because that's what you're doing. And you're going to be doing it in the way of him. He's telling you right up front. See, because many people have the biggest problem with that. They'll say, well, no, I never treated him as a God. Okay. Did you did you honor him out of pastor appreciation? Yeah. Okay, you treated him as a God. No, I didn't. I just honored him. You know, he was just doing God's work. God said, I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you knowledge and understanding. So if he's giving, there's no reason to pay him because God's going to pay him. See, this is the problem where we had the biggest problem in the world because no matter what, we, we want to always make ourselves right. 
That's why these. That's why I like to keep these Bibles up. Cause he's telling you, I will give you. Right there. Right there. Let me. Let me. Let me. I'm gonna highlight just what I want. I don't know why this don't want to go out. There we go. He's telling you, I will give you a pass according to my heart. Given, he's given a gift. You don't pay for that. So if you've given this man anything, you'd have made this man a God. They can sit there and tell you whatever they want to tell you past that, but they'd have made that man a God. And, it's telling you, and then he should speak in the name of other gods. Even that prophet... Because he's going to be speaking, talking about the name of God. So he still is a prophet, but he's not a prophet of God. But he said, and that prophet shall die. That prophet is going to die. He, he's clear. He is pretty clear here. And the reason he does that is this. Because in verse 12, oh, he, he tells you this. He says, they who, those pastors he's given according to his heart, they who, those pastors that's according to God's heart, they shall bear thee up in their hands, in their power, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone, lest you're going to buck against this system that he has set up. This is what this is telling you about right up here. Because all flesh got to be made of enemy of the footstool. That's what he's telling you that. That's why he's telling you specifically why you got to do it this way. Many of us going to always continue to search other things and find out other ways to sit there to justify flesh. And that's where our problem is. So as we continue to go down through here, we were going to find out many different things. And as I said before, you know, right after this, you can uh, you can look down in the description if you want to purchase the uh, book for this to where you can actually be going through and taking notes through it. Or if you guys, as I said, we got to make a clear announcement because they're turning up the heat a little bit with a lot of people. So if you're part of this um, service over here, not saying, but you're a regular person to where we also see you in the back and we actually know who you are. You can come in the back to where we can take care to make sure you can have a proper documentation for your school or for your employer. So we can take care of those things. But just as I said, we want to make sure if you somebody new and we don't know who you are, you have a 99.9% .9 chance that it's not going to happen. But if we do know who you are and you've been part of this school and everything that we do over here, we make sure we take care of that on this side. So if you have not, just make sure you can uh, click on the live meeting for that Zoom and you can come right back. If you like to get the uh, the Hebrew workbook with the proverb book, you also see that where you can purchase the book through, um, through Preset Mastery. You will not be paying for any of the um, shipping or the taxes. But if you, don't, if you choose to go through uh, Lulu or you want to go through Amazon, you're more than welcome to do so. And you can go there. You can purchase the book through there. So with that, we're going to get ready to uh, go into the back to where if uh, anybody that need assistance based on their job or school, we will take care of that. But as I said, make sure that you are already part of what we do here and we know who you are. So if not, I'm just letting you know up front it will become a problem so with that we're going to end it here and we're going to go back over to the other side so you can look down see live meeting you can come right into the zoom meeting and we'll be more than happy to make sure we can take care of it so with that i say until this wednesday and we'll be picking up our proverbs i say until then i say to each and every person hey shalom